Hey everybody, how's it going? Corey here from ThemeCo with a grid layout breakdown for you all. So I've got this kind of offset masonry section I've been working on here. And I wanna share with you all a reason why you might not always, keyword always, want to use this cell layout editor button up here. As awesome as it is, and as much as I pretty much use it on 95% of my designs I use in the grid element, there are times where it might make sense to not use it. So let's uh, just kind of explain and dive into why. Before we do that, however, let's just run through the general grid setup. I've got three equal width columns on this breakpoint using my FR units. I am stretching my cells out, both horizontally and vertically, to match their width and height. And then we've, of course, got a little gap here, which we can adjust to any value we want. Clicking into a cell, We'll see that we're getting the height of the cell just by setting a top padding value. I've got this advanced background going on here. That's where the image is coming from. And the height is coming from the padding. We could of course use a gap element or use our uh, grid row tracks. Lots of different ways to do the same thing. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump up to our cell layout box here and kind of explain what's going on. So we have no X axis placement for this particular cell, but we are placing it on the Y axis. And we've done that by stating that it should start at line three, and then it should span three tracks. And we can visualize that a little bit better by turning on the cell layout editor. And remember that our lines start at the edge of the grid, and we can count each line by effectively counting the gap in between. So this would be line one, line two, and line three. So we see that our cell is starting at line three, and then we can see that it's also spanning three rows. So that's important thing number one to take in here. This span syntax is part of the CSS grid spec, and it's perfectly valid to type in over here if you want to do things manually. One thing to keep in mind whenever we take a cell over here inside the cell layout editor, and either resize it or drag it to a new position is that all four of these coordinates will be set for you. And we do that for a lot of different reasons, just to be explicit. So we make sure there's no weird layout stuff happening if you leave these values out. It allows you to easily overlap cells and get some really cool layouts. So there's some good reasoning behind why we do that. However, using those hard numbers doesn't allow you to take advantage of things like the span syntax. And we can see, for example, if I take this cell and drag it up, now all four of my coordinates have been set using hard numbers there. Placing it back down will do the same. So this is totally fine, but it does require that you have to physically place everything onto a grid. And if you'll look at the grid row template that I'm using here, you'll see that I'm just using auto rows. So all of these rows are just getting generated simply by the positioning of each cell over here. Now that is working happens on our second row here. But before I do that, let's just look at cell two here. You'll see again, we're starting it on the second row, span three, first row, span three for my final cell there. Now for every cell on this breakpoint after these first three, what I'm doing is setting its Y axis value, its start value to auto, and then I'm setting its in value to span three. So what this allows me to do is match the height of all my cells, but it will allow its Y positioning to simply fall into place wherever it should be kind of next in line. The great thing about doing this is for example, if I wanted to add another cell to my layout, I could simply find my last cell here and then duplicate it. And you'll see that a new one pops into place because again, it's Y positioning is just auto, but it's maintaining the height that all of my other cells get here. I could duplicate it again, get another cell, and you'll see that they're each falling into place where they should be. So again, the main thing to take away from this particular setup is that if we had used a fixed positioning for my X start and end and my Y start and end, and if I had duplicated that cell, it would simply appear right in this same spot again, and we'd either have to physically move it to a new spot, or maybe we don't even recognize that a new cell popped in because it's just overlaying my old one. 
So this right here is reason number one why you might not want to always use the cell layout editor to drag things around. Now let's look at another variation of this. We jump down to, I believe it's our small breakpoint. Yes, okay. So I'm doing something here that we've discussed in some other videos previously, but I'm effectively setting up three columns here for this viewport. I've got five rims to the outside. That's the gap you're seeing here. A one rim column that fills all space here and then five rims to the side. And again, we can visualize this by turning on our cell layout editor. Now, if I click into this first cell here, you'll see that for this breakpoint, what I'm doing is I have no Y values set, but I have set my X start to be one. So it's starting at the first line here and then it's spanning two tracks. So you can see the cell moving from here into this track. Alternately, I can click onto this cell and I'm doing a little bit of a reversal here just to show you some things you can do. So I'm actually starting from the end here, the fourth line, one, two, three, four, and then I'm spanning two back the other direction. Another way you could write this would actually be negative one. That effectively means start from the end of my columns template. We'll just put this back to four for now. So again, what's great about this is any cell that I take here and then duplicate will simply file into place using the values from before. Now I'll have to tweak this a little bit based on the alternating scheme I'm kind of going for here but it's similar to the other example where basically because we don't have every value set, we won't get any weird overlapping or think that something didn't appear when actually it did. And then I'm using pretty much this exact same layout on my extra small breakpoint. Yeah, just using smaller values here for those outer gaps. So that's basically it. Just a quick rundown of while the cell layout editor is incredibly helpful, there are reasons and situations where you might not want to use it. And why knowing the CSS grid syntax itself can be really helpful for creating these patterns where adding new content doesn't require you to completely shuffle everything around anytime something new is added.